Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 25th of October 2022. So during that virtual meeting, hi Damien Duportal, we have Hervé Lemeur, Mark White is in holidays, Stéphane Merle is there, and we have at, we have Stéphane Verhart, uh, Bruno Verhaarten, sorry. Um, yeah, I need to sleep a bit. Verhaarten, okay. Um, let me share with you the link to the share notes that will be useful. It's added in the Zoom chat. Okay, first of all, announcement. First announcement, the weekly. It was successful on release CI Jenkins IO. So if I'm not mistaken, and we can check on the screen recording, then it's visible on the website. So the version, that version is available, at least the WAR file released, WAR packages. Um, Docker image is ready. I've uh, triggered the build manually just before our call. So I assume that the last release item to be done later as usual, such as the change log. Is there any question? Nope, cool. Uh, announcement, we had a security release last week. So thanks for the huge work that the security team did on that one. Uh, that was plugins. Uh, only plugins. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for handling the updates everywhere. So we have been able to deploy plugins on our controller, except CI Jenkins IO, that was part of the security advisory itself. But for the other, in less than uh, 24 hours, we had everything up to date. So thanks for that. Um, it's a kind of uh, business as usual, but it's still positive to mention it, that we can keep up to date with these elements. Security update last week, plugins only. Okay, do you have other announcements on your own folks? Uh, just one note, next, the weekly meeting next week, thanks Stefan for reminding me uh, just before the meeting, uh, will be cancelled because the 1st of November is a non-working day for most of the European countries, as far as I can tell. Um, so unless uh, people in the US want to run the meeting, uh, it's cancelled because the four of us there won't be available. I don't know if it's if it's between states or if the US, if it's a work day in the US, I have no idea. So pardon my in culture. It's a Christian all sense day. Uh, so weekly meeting cancelled the 1st of November, which means we'll see each other the 7th of November. That will also, uh, that's a reminder that the upcoming uh, milestone will have to take in account that it will be a two week milestone instead of only one week. Is there any question? Nope, okay. Upcoming calendar, next weekly, 1st of November. So that will be monitored by our US uh, colleagues if they are working that day. Otherwise, uh, Mark and I will be the fallback as the default page of the default back in case of issue. Next LTS, I think it's the 5th of November, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. I'm going to check on community events. There is a nice calendar here. Now, that will be the 2nd of November. That free. I don't think there is no expectation from us. Uh, no, no security release announced. And next major events, no next major event. Ah. Did I forget something or is it okay for everyone? Okay. Time to, to switch to what did we close or finished during the past milestone? 
um, a bunch of uh, permissions issues or account recovery. Uh, I don't think it's worth spending sometimes unless you have question. So deleted accounts, as usual, when someone requests a password reset or a deletion or permission, always check that they are who they seek, uh, who they, they tell us they have. So you have to validate either GitHub account and or Jenkins account. Never do it only on that one. If you are unsure, please ask the others. There is no shame on that. Better to be safe. Um, thanks again, uh, Hervé and Alex, for working out the upcoming depreciation of GitHub Action set output uh, system. So now it's soon like everything has been done. Uh, thanks for everyone involved on helping the contributor who lost their accesses. Um, so we had Chief Rog issues uh, last Friday. We had LDAP outage last Friday as well. And we had people who didn't read carefully the, um, the instruction for a plugin maintainer when they do a Maven release from the machine. And we had a misconfiguration. That one is important to note in Artifactory that led one of the documentation to be wrong. Let me show you the page. Here we are. Okay, so on the page performing a plugin release manually, you have the UI way, which is the recommended de facto way. You have to log in on Artifactory, which is a good way to uh, acceptance test your password. Is it the correct password? Do you have access to Artifactory? And then you have to follow carefully these steps. And when I say carefully, I mean it. It's not just, I mean, you read each word twice, each sentence twice, and then you follow up the instruction. Of course, anyone interested since it's October 1st, anyone interested on in adding screenshots or helping maintaining that page, that will be helpful. That's just a note. So um, Artifactory is able to generate the correct Maven settings for you that you can download even with encrypted password. So you have to use it by default. Also, there is an API endpoint on Artifactory that allows you to download that settings XML already pre-baked for you. That was the alternative. However, that URL was answering unauthorized for everyone, including the, the admins, except uh, one or two persons that were the initial creator. That was because this one settings was changed a few months before and no one noticed. So thanks, Daniel Beck, for fixing that. So now it's still uh, it's uh, working again, confirmed by, by the end user. Wanted to mention that because some contributors have issues, but most of the time, 99% of the time, we have to point them to that documentation and tell them to validate that. Half of the time, they can't even log into your Artifactory. So that's, that means they have to reset the password on the LDAP and wait for the, the token to be synchronized. Um, what did we have? So there were some non-infra related thing, SM link missing for several plugins. So Update Center was uh, generating unexpected data for six plugins which broke the plugin site for uh, some of these plugins. So it has been fixed by uh, numerous people. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks, Stefan, for the huge work on CI Jenkins IO. So we have the metrics. There is a new help desk issue. If you are a developer contributor and you want to, uh, to ask the infra team for metrics about an agent behavior, either because you had issue or if you want to uh, diagnose, um, that allows us now to make assumption and we are going to be able to fine tune the machine based on the workload because we will have metrics for that. So really nice work, Stefan. Uh, next thing is that we cannot use Datadog dashboards because as soon as they are public, we lose the feature of selecting machines on the dropdown and we don't have a search feature. So if anyone has a, is a, Datadog employee or hardcore user and have a solution, we are all here, but it looks like we will have to build a custom application such as a Grafana dashboard that will be dedicated to only CI Jenkins IO metrics, particularly machines. That could be also interesting to see open telemetry things there. 
because Grafana has Tempo or Jaeger support, and we can even add build logs. So maybe starting a platform, an observability platform, only for CI Jenkins IO that will be public alongside could be interesting. Uh, it's not the top priority for the team, but if anyone wants to uh, to go uh, to put their foot on that topic, I heard some people were interested as part of Oktoberfest, but that might span a, little, a bit more than that. But you are welcome. Speaking about, we removed the Loki installation. We had a Loki installation, so that's a log collector system in like Prometheus that you can view through Grafana dashboard. Loki was installed on our main AKS cluster, Prod Public Gates. It was broken since September 2020 when we bumped the version from two to three, so major version bump. Uh, there's been a lot of changes, especially that Loki is now using operators by default for managing Grafana connection. And it is now running as highly available system with a, a pool of read and write nodes which means we have to set up shared storage and a lot of things. Since it was broken since two months, no reason to keep that system. It was already broken a few months ago. We already reset it, so we were not using it. It's not uh, about metrics, it's about logs. We weren't using log collection from our system, which means we don't have log collection and we don't use it. So nice improvement or foundation for the observability of our platform in the future. Any question about all these tasks? Did I forget one task? Don't think so, okay. Let's move to the open tasks then. Upgrades to, I'm following from the left and I will try my, my best to keep the order. So upgrade to Kubernetes 1.23. Stefan, Hervé, can you give us an update? Okay, so we, we did um, three first ones, if I remember correctly. Um, the OKS is, uh, is done. The two clusters in the OKS, the OKS and the OKS public, uh, that went smoothly, if I remember correctly. Um, and then we did EKS yesterday on Amazon, and that was uh, not so easy. Um, we had a few problems uh, with the, um, the volumes with the CSI uh, configuration, um, and we still have the uh, the Azure EKS to upgrade, and that one will be an uh, uh, UI. Uh, Upgrade, no, not as good, but uh, still to go. We don't hear you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, do we have a date time uh, proposed for Azure, or did you, or I assume you might not have had the time to plan it? We didn't plan it. No. Okay, no. Don't forget that we will have a long weekend and I might not be available Friday. So yeah, just as a reminder, I don't mind you doing that when I'm off, but just- yeah, I do plan. mind. <laughs> you don't do anything tonight, uh, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> I, I got plan for me tonight, sorry. I got plan every night, you know, I'm a, I'm a party boy. Um, okay, thanks a lot for this work. So as a reminder, um, Azure, uh, no, it's not, it's Digital Ocean is going to drop the 1.22 Kubernetes uh, version from their system. So that means end of October. So next week, our version of Digital Ocean would have been unsupported. So that's the reason why we had to do that migration. So thanks a lot. Anything else on uh, Kubernetes 1.23? Nope. So just a note, I will uh, update, but it uh, broke the new artifact caching proxy on AWS. So we are going to add an issue about the upcoming improvement. I will later list that on upcoming. Um, yeah, but there has been an issue opened by Mark. I will add it. Add issue here. Okay. And that's all for me. So I assume 
We add this one for next milestone, right? Oh, I forgot to create the milestone. But is that correct? It's a, you... a two-week milestone. Don't forget when you create it. Yep. Milestone. Infra team sync 2011-07. Yep. And, oh, eight, sorry. Oh, eight, yes. Okay, so let's add it to the next milestone. Do we agree we are, you are going to continue working on that? Yes. Side note, the change log, uh, the, the task list here has been open with everything, we, we all the issues and challenges we had. So I'm particularly proud of your work folks there because I'm sure next time that will be clearly improved. Thanks for that. Okay, next item, artifact download failed on agent using repo cache. So that's the one that was caused. In, in uh, part, in part. Oh, interesting. Yep. So, so yep, this is good. Uh, uh, Mark opened an issue because uh, the build of many of the plugins I've installed, uh, activated uh, the artifact caching proxy uh, failed. Um, the one uh, put in the issue uh, was running on the AWS proxy, so which was out, down, so it failed uh, directly. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, as temporary uh, measure, we uh, removed uh, the AWS from the available provider in the pipeline library function, mm -hmm. the build plugin function. And uh, now to fix that, uh, we have many things to, uh, to put in place. Uh, the first one uh, will uh, is uh, there is a pull request open to to be able to define the available uh, proxy provider uh, with uh, a global uh, environment variable defined on the Jenkins controller. So for CI Jenkins Tataio, we can uh, easily disable or enable uh, one of the provider if we have an issue or maintenance on them. Instead of okay. uh, modifying uh, the hard-coded value uh, uh, in the pipeline library. Dynamically, instead of... I will add the link to the project. Okay. Cool, that was static code in pipeline library thanks for that one you said partially that yeah, mean, because uh, you... i've also noticed uh, since uh, friday i've had i restarted some build because they failed uh, they, um, they received uh, 504 uh, errors okay. if you were, um, uh, from the proxy I didn't add the time to activate the Datadog uh, metrics and log uh, collection. I have added to the artifact caching proxy and chart. Okay. But, uh, enable Datadog logs and metrics on ACP to I'll diagnose the HTTP. To the pull request. Cool. And uh, so one part will be to check what well, uh, what uh, causes error, and mm -hmm. then on the pipeline library, I attempt to to implement an help check on the proxy. Uh, for that, I've uh, uh, merged a pull request to expose the else uh, pass. Uh, with uh, an additional ingress for the engine's uh, proxy without uh, the basic authentication. So we don't need to have the credential in the pipeline library as they are managed by the config file provider plugin. Okay. And uh, we 
so I, with this L check, I'll uh, implement the fallback uh, in the backend library, checking if the proxy is open, responding, and if not, uh, using the Gfrog uh, repository. Cool. Um, may I let you transplant once you will be finished uh, these elements on the issue that Mark opened? Just so we have a, um, the notes of the meetings and we have uh, actionable items on the help desk issues. Yep. I'll reference the issue also in my pull request. And also something we discussed together, I'm adding, uh, maybe we could see if it worked by uh, having uh, uh, two replicas of each ACP instance. Yes. Set replication of ACP pods to two. So advantage when we are, so the, the fallback is the first thing when the service is broken. And the second one is a protection once a build started and start using the proxy. If we don't speak about the five or four errors that are only temporary, I assume. But if the build is running and at the same time, someone start maintenance of the Kubernetes cluster where the current ACP is used, you want to have a load balancer that if one instance goes away, it starts to the second one. So since we don't, so advantage, better higher, higher availability, uh, potential issue, since it will use a different caching volume, you might not have exactly the same result depending on which instance you are sent to. So that's, that will be a fine balance to find, but soon it's better to have IO availability for now. And if it's a mistake, then we can go back uh, to that initial choice. Any question? No. Thanks, Hervé, for uh, the work and the summary. Thanks, uh, folks, uh, Stefan, also for the support on that area. Uh, we were we were enough of free. Uh, that was a, a lot of help, so thanks a lot. OK, so I'm moving that one on the next milestone. Oh, I closed the issue. OK, next one is Update Center 404. Did I did not receive the answer. I'm going to extend my question on that topic. So the subject was, um, since the last LTS release, uh, someone has issue on one view of the update center JSON file that I didn't know about. Uh, that one was is or was named dynamic. I remember it might have been unsupported or not. I'm not sure about of the status of this one. So I'm re I'm removing myself from the SNE just in case someone has some time to uh, to hide there. But yeah, I will uh, I will try to ask further and find documentation on that topic. Um, the person asked me directly, nominatively, that's why I'm removing myself, just so they see if they ask help nominatively, someone say, yep, I'm not there, even though I will, I intend to work on that one. The main thing is that we need to evaluate the criticity of this one, because maybe it's something really critical. It doesn't look like, but I wasn't able to have more information. So we have to, we have to continue working on this one. Any question? Okay, next one. Um, nothing done, not enough time. Uh, next one, so we had someone having issues. I think we can close the next one. So that person is using a product named Red Hat Satellite that looks like to it's a kind of, of um, crawler that create local mirrors of the URM repositories, at least locally inside the organization. Um, that system was failing, not sure why, uh, at, least, at least because some of the mirrors when downloading the Debian, because it was first getting the, the index of the YUM package from Jenkins.io, which worked as expected. And then for each version, it was downloading a copy of the, of the RPM file. For each download, of course, they were redirected to one of our mirrors. 
but depending on the items, the mirrors are not always the same, especially because older items are removed from most of the mirrors, except a few. So some of the mirrors were still serving, some of the mirrors weren't, and some of the mirrors were uh, not on the firewall allow lists. So failing the communication when downloading the Debian files. The person say that the metadata were also checked on each package final URL, which looks weird, but I mean, we, I don't know the, the product. And it looks like they found a way to say, always use the main URL for metadata because metadata are not cached on our mirrors. They are cached on the uh, PKG machine, which is also uh, pushed to people through Fastly CDN. Why don't we mirror this file? Because we need to be able to provide cache invalidation if we have a security issue that need to invalidate a package, which is a hard requirement. We can invalidate Fastly. That's automatic. Each time you change the package, the, the process for us for building package as the last item, which is invalidate Fastly cache. We control it and it's quick and efficient. While in the case of mirrors, we cannot control the frequency on which mirrors are updating it. We could still add the metadata to the mirrors because we own the mirror redirector, which has a hash of a given file. So if the metadata change, the hash change. So the system will be able to not uh, serve requests to the uh, mirrors that are not up to date. But this might still be an issue if someone decides to select one mirror. They don't have the guarantee that's the correct file. And that is the proof that people are not doing that. And the reason to keep metadata while the file are not changing because we have a checksum for them. So I'm gonna close that issue after the meeting with a message. It seems like it was closed because unless you understand something else, it looked like the user was able to fix everything on the whole, right? Yes, it seems like that, yes. I will update it after. To be closed. Reintroduce artifact caching proxy. So, Hervé did us a, a nice definition, right? Um, we had the next steps. Let me clear that milestone. So, Hervé, you continue working on this one. Uh, let me add a reference from Mark issue. Did ah. so looks good. Is there anything else to add about the artifact caching proxy? No. So let's continue. Um, another issue, I assume that should be closed. Oh no. Uh, someone complained about uh, one of our mirror being too uh, slow. We asked that person to add um, uh, the, the query string mirror list, which shows you on your web browser, what are the mirrors and which one is selected in your case, because you might not have the same result as that person depending on where you are in the world. The mirroring use GeoIP database. And in that case, that person is in India and the closest mirror, geographically speaking, is in China. However, maybe it's closer, but it's clearly slower. So we, in short term, we unblocked the user. No, so no criticity there. Uh, they can use the other URL there and clearly they were faster. So that person was able to download with an acceptable rate. Um, thing is, we need people to provide, um, to provide mirrors, right? in India. So we could create one on DigitalOcean since we have new credits. And we had also an issue, uh, people asking for uh, information. That's another upcoming tasks. Uh, so they have everything ready to set up a mirror. Don't know if they are going to answer because the free last person asking for that never answered back. Um, so I propose that we close the previous issue in favor of that one.
I got I got a thumb up on the last one. Okay. That's a good news. Uh, whoa. Okay. So they acknowledge you answer. That's I'm happy to hear that. Uh, so closing in favor of so another issue to close. So next issue. Archive the few Jira components. I missed this one, so I have no idea what it's about. Yeah, it was I, I failed to ask you if you had the Jira permission. If not, we can yes. ping uh, the Jira admin. Yeah. Yes, it, I have. So, I've, so okay. I forgot to ping you about this issue. No problem at all, buddy. Thanks. So then, if it's okay, uh, I will ask someone to bear with me on this one to do it because of Shira admin. Otherwise, I'm sure Tim and uh, Mark and Daniel have uh, permission Shira admin. I'm not the only one. If any day I'm not available, but so yeah. So oh. I propose we I ping the Shira admin in this issue. Yes. No. Yes, good idea. But we can still, uh, we can still do it uh, for Alex. Thanks a lot. Uh, next step, next issue. Uh, we had uh, an issue, uh, Windows ACI, so the Docker uh, Windows agent with GDK were broken last week when we deployed a new version of the images. Uh, Git was absent, so it was absent from the path uh, because uh, I messed up uh, one of the changes. So the root cause was, was I, I think I mentioned the root cause. We did some yeah. change and it broke the image, right? The root cause was you. That's what you wrote. Yeah, but for sure. but it's, it's a little wrong because you just changed the main uh, images in image in, uh, that, in uh, the Docker file. And the um, other one doesn't have the path with the within the yep. past, we didn't have Git. We, we changed the base image. Yeah, and it, we ended up, um, yeah, the path was incorrect. As Jesse uh, mentioned, we need some kind of acceptance test on this one, or at least functional test. So that's why I'm keeping that issue uh, opened because I would like to add in the build process for this image, a step that say, okay, now that the image is built, run that command, that command, or that command to validate a set of minimalistic expectation that we could have from any Docker inbound agent, such as executing Git, Git should be there, Java version should be there, Maven should be there, and the Java default version should be the expected one, 11 or 8 or 17 in the future. So that's why this image is uh, still uh, open. Um, I'm keeping that one also for an upcoming thing. Uh, so I'm adding it for the next steps. Uh, Stefan, you mentioned you could have been interested on yes, uh, testing Docker or uh, is it okay if we pair on this one? Yes, yes, yes. I will give you some pointers so you could, you should be able, you should be free to try it on your own. So sorry for the inconvenience. The main reason was us updating a uh, Git version. Um, okay. Next step, Jenkins mirror. So that's the one you mentioned. Uh, so the requester acknowledged. Waiting for them. So I propose that there is no action on our side. So I propose that we remove the Jenkins mirror one. Um, we remove it from milestone and we wait for them to, to give us insights. Any objection? No. Okay. Um, can't able to get email for the password. Okay, I missed this one, so sorry for that. Oh no, that's one that's uh, spawned since two weeks. So I propose, as we said last week, we close it without any feedback from the user. Looks good? Yes. Cool, gotta do it afterwards to be closed. Feedback from an user. 
Okay. Um, next one. So I'm removing. Okay, I'm not removing this. I need to close it. Next one: pipeline step doc generator and backend extension indexer. So was able to add the required tool on infra CI and test tested successfully one of the two. The second one uh, failed because uh, Java out of memory exception. Um, related to the GDK 11 version we used. That's my best guess because it looks a lot on the one of the issue fixed on the latest uh, Timurian 11. Uh, so next step for me is trying with the new agent because it takes three hours. And instead of archiving the files, that that's the current status because it's done in CI Jenkins.io, which made them public. I will have to switch archiving to publish. We have a special pipeline library function that takes care of publishing inside reports.jenkins.io web server, which is publicly available. So that's one line change, and I will re trigger the builds, and that should be okay. Uh, so I'm adding it to the next milestone. It's a kind of a background task for me because it's since it's three to five hours builds, I mean, I cannot spend all my time on this one unless someone is interested, but yeah. The next step will be, as remember, moving the build of Jenkins IO to use this new URL on report Jenkins, and then CI Jenkins IO won't be required to build a Jenkins IO website. And finally, we will be able to move the Jenkins IO website generation away from trusted, uh, at least the Chinese one, and we can move it to infra CI to fix it and have it updated. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, tools, okay, but OM on one of the builds, next step, publish artifacts on reports Jenkins IO and try new GDK 11 to avoid OOM. Um, CI Jenkins IO job stories is not handling pull requests. So I didn't have time to spend on this one, but we were able to underline what is expected by a given for this one. But depending on what we want for an user, we want CI Jenkins IO and infra CI Jenkins IO to do different things. So now the next step is Jenkins file writings. We have two Jenkins files, two pipelines that we need to configure. Uh, so I don't know if anyone is interested in working on that one. If not, I will take care of that on background as well. Okay, so I'm moving, in, moving it to next milestone. Uh, requirements defined, but the implement pipeline writing. Uh, Realign Jenkins uh, CI Jenkins org mission. So spoiler alert to do. Nothing done this week. Sorry for that. Didn't have time. Windows agent are so slow. So for that one, we have updated the we have updated the, the ACI agents. So we discovered an issue with the the data volumes that were used for Maven wasn't a data volume, but it was written directly on the container layered file system, which performance in IO are really poor. So that might be a partial improvement. The next step is to check the status of the Windows virtual machine that we create for agent on both Amazon and uh, Azure. And we have to check how to, to check if the IO system caching is enabled on Windows. Sounds like it should be a Windows uh, command line to enable something, but that might be cloud related. So we have to check uh, for, for both. If it's Windows only, it's one line to add on the Packer image provision PowerShell script. If it's cloud uh, related, then we have to define for each cloud which kind of instance and which option it is when we create virtual machines. Um, I propose to move it to infra team sync next. I don't think we will have time to work on this one. Uh, please feel free um, 
to remove it or add a message and we can remove it if we start working on this one. I'm removing myself from the SNS. Any question? Back to backlog, unless we have time to work on it. Key clock performance horrific when looking up. So Stefan and I plan to work on it uh, today, but we were uh, fixing the issues with EKS, all the teams. So that work has been delayed. So I propose that we move it to next uh, milestone and we will find a time to work on it after finishing Kubernetes upgrade. Is that okay for you? Yes. Because that one doesn't require me. Um, there is a first step of uh, retrieving information, preparing the plan, and I only, I mean, as soon as Mark or Hervé or someone else than you, Stefan, is able to validate the plan because always per, then you can proceed. You already did that. It's quite quite easy. We'll do my best. I mean, there is absolutely no need for someone for the part of creating the new database on Terraform Azure. You can already do it and you can start getting the dump of the actual one. At least this part are absolutely asynchronous. The synchronous part that require all the team to be aware is the day when we will stop key cloak. Then we are migrate the data, stop the database on Amazon, switch key cloak deployment to the new database and see if it works. Okay. Um, Jenkins release on RSS to Twitter, Hervé, what's the status for this one? I have um, created the M chart to host uh, this uh, application on Prod Public Aides. I've uh, mistake on the secret definition, I have to to fix it and then I can I will be able to uh, deploy it on pod on pod public cluster. I have uh, prepared the pair for that. Cool. Public. Nice. Almost there then. Thanks a lot. So we can move it to upcoming milestone. Is it okay for you? Yes. Okay, now new issues that that we received recently. Um, I'm taking the most recent one. Add the reminder about Jira notification email address. Mm, totally missed that one. It's not uncommon for maintenance to use. It's only triage that I'm doing here. Add a reminder to the account tab that the Jira. Okay, so that's a kind of feature request for the account tab, right? Yep, I think Daniel opened it here for having more visibility, I think, because not many people are following the account tab yep. repository. Okay, so I removed triage, but I don't think that, I mean, it's not yeah. a priority for us. Uh, better spend uh, our time on moving away from Akuntap, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, next issue, artifact download failed. So that one is already tracked. Password. Okay. Fix, please. Okay, I'm adding that to the milestone just to keep track of it, but yeah. I think that will be the same. I will ask the person to provide more information and prove who they are, unless someone wants to take care of it. A new issue that came during the uh, previous. I'm thinking just Sorry. thinking out loud. We might want to add uh, an issue template for account recovery with oh, a check yeah. box checklist. I have made that, I have provided this, I run everything, because we have quite uh, frequently this kind of issue and we are asking the same thing every time, so. Yep, good idea. Um, 
no action for infra team for now refer for account app uh correct so let me let me open it. an issue uh, i'll open an issue yep to be added to new milestone plus add an issue to add a template for account password recovery as per early idea. Okay. So an issue that uh, came across the last platform SIG meetings. Um, so we don't have PowerPC 64 machines anymore. A cleanup has been started on the official Docker image. We could have an alternate solution in the future, but nothing on the upcoming weeks. So the goal for us is to clean up any mention of the PPC64 uh, system on, on our infrastructure. So that one is going to be added to the next milestone. Um, I think uh, anyone is absolutely capable of doing that. Can you yes. see uh, myself, please? Yes. We spoke about that, I just forgot. No problem. So I created the issue to track it. I've uh, listed what I thought uh, has to be done. I might have missed something, but at least this element will be interesting. So we have an agent definition on CI Jenkins IO to remove. The associated credential has to be removed manually on the UI. Um, we have to update the tool definition and the update key automatic update because the tool definition for GDK says, oh, if it's Linux, that CPU, then use this one. If it's PPC, use this one. So you have to remove that case and update CLI when checking for new GDK version, check if the PPC is available before proposing a pull request for updating. The goal is to update the same for everyone. We add documentation, I assume. And so then if we, afterward, uh, any other mention. So that one is added. Uh, um, do we have new other issue? That one is going to be closed. We created a proposal to add external DNS to the Kubernetes cluster with an ingress. Uh, so we would have a solution when upgrading load balancers to have automatically the artifact caching proxy being up to date. Um, I'm adding that one to current milestone because I need to report the experimentation with it today. Uh, some fails, some are working. Uh, it's just a kind of brainstorming issue. Once I will have my reports, then I will remove it from the milestone unless someone wants to work on it. The goal is always have DNS that update itself as soon as possible if there is a new load balancer public IP. That's the goal. That will that be useful for the, the part where we, we choose to have uh, um, elastic IP, external IP that's keep, that we keep the same? That could be a solution, yep. Um, okay. Reports to be updated with the IP experiment for DNS update. Okay, do we have other issues there? Jira components, that one is removed, Jenkins mirror, okay. Um, infra team sync next. No, next to portal de I think that's all. Yep, yep, yep. Nothing else for me. Is there anything else from for you? No, we're good. Okay, no. so I'm going to update the notes and publish last week and today and today's notes. Thanks, Paul. So see you in two weeks. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Recording. No. Uh,